Hello students, in the previous lecture of pin jointed trusses, we had covered the basic concepts of uh, uh, method of joints and method of sections. We had solved five problems on method of joints and method of sections. All those problems were full length problems. In this lecture, we will first start with the understanding of zero force members. Sometimes in our examination, they ask you to identify the zero force members without any calculations. As we have already uh, discussed five problems on method of joints, as well as on method of sections in the previous lecture. Now we will be in the position to understand the identification of zero force members in any given trust without any calculations. So we have to understand the fundamentals of it. Look at this side zero force members. Now, there will be some conclusions will be drawn, which will be based on method of joints. At any joint, if two members are meeting at any angle other than 180 degree, and there is no external load or at, at the joint, force in both the members will be zero. Look at this side on this FBD. Here, students, you have two members, P and F, they are meeting at 90 degree. If you write sigma, apply sigma Fx equal to zero, P will be zero. If you write sigma Fy, F will be zero. This is the case when the two members are meeting at 90 degree and there is no external load. Now we'll take a case when the two members are meeting at any angle, uh, I mean, less than 90 or more than 90. Like here, I have shown that it is less than 90. So in this case, if you take X reference X is along the line of action of force P and Y will be obviously normal to that. So suppose we write here sigma F Y is equal to zero, F sine theta is equal to zero, that is F is zero, all right? And sigma F X is equal to zero, that gets you the value of P is also zero. All right. So this is the conclusion what we draw it. We should remember that. This is what uh, should be remembered. This is note number one. At any joint, if three members are meeting, uh, sorry, at any joint, two members are meeting at any angle other than 180 degree. There is no external load on the joint. Forces of both the members will be zero. Now we come to note number two. At any joint, if three members are meeting, no external load on the joint, and out of the three members, two are in one line, force in third member will be zero. Now look at this FBD. Here, three members are there meeting at a joint. No external load on joint. Two are in one line. Force in third member will be zero. How come it is? Here, two members are along x-axis and this is along y-axis. Sigma f y is equal to zero gives f is zero. Now, here, FBD joint is in this way. Two members are inclined, right? But along the same line, there is a third member which is making some angle, uh, say theta with the direction of one of the forces. So suppose we take in this case X, reference X is along uh, the axis of this member and Y normal to it. So suppose we apply sigma F Y is equal to zero on this FBD, F sine theta will be zero. That means F is zero. So we can conclude like this. At any joint, if three members are meeting, no external load on the joint, and out of the three members, two are meeting, uh, two are uh, acting along the same line, force in third member will be zero, all right? In note number one and in note number two, we said that there is no external load. Now we are coming to third node. On the third node, I'm saying that let there be load, let there be reactions. But every day the joint should be in the shape of like a T, right? Including loads and reactions. So force in third member perpendicular to the other two will be zero. Like in this case, you can see that every day the joint is in the shape of letter T. So if you write sigma Fx equal to zero, force, in, uh, force F is zero. Similarly here, sigma Fx equal to zero gives you F is zero. Here, if you write sigma Fy is equal to zero, F is zero. Here you write sigma Fy is equal to zero, you understand F is zero. So here, note number three, we conclude that uh, if FBD of the joint is in the shape of letter T, including reactions, let there be reactions, let there be loads, but if FBD of the joint, joint is in the shape of letter T, then two members will be along one line, right? The force in third member perpendicular to the other two will be zero. So if you remember these three conclusions, it will be possible for us to identify the zero force members in any given trust without doing any calculation. So that's what we'll understand now in the, in the next uh, slide, the problems uh, where uh, we'll identify the zero force members and that too without any calculations. Okay, students, here, this is the first problem of today's lecture. It is uh, type one truss. We are continuing with the, still with the type one truss. And type one truss is a truss supported on one hinge at one roller. So we are continuing with the uh, same type. 
but uh, we have started uh, with this first problem of today's lecture. Or you can say this is the sixth problem on pin jointed trusses. I, I read the problem. Identify the zero force members in the given truss. This is one truss given to you. This is other truss given to you. Let's consider FBD of the first truss we have drawn. FBD means what? We'll show the external loads. We'll show the reactions. A is hinge. So we have shown two reactions, HA and VA. Directions are as Here there is a roller. Reaction will be normal. Uh, uh, there will be one reaction exerted by the roller perpendicular to the plane on which the roller is resting. Here roller is resting on horizontal plane. Reaction will be OK. So we have marked all our reactions. Also FBD is ready. Now, Suppose we talk about joint D, at joint D. FBD of this joint is in the shape of uh, FBD. Here two members are meeting. If you uh, at, uh, at joint D, two members are meeting at any angle other than 180 degree. No external load on the joint. Force in both the members will be true. <coughs> so under note number one, we understand force in member CD and AD will be zero. At joint C, we cannot draw any conclusion because FBD of the joint does not fit into uh, note number one, two, or three. Similarly, at joint A, we cannot conclude uh, any zero force member. Yes, now we come to joint B. At joint B, now there is a reaction. There is a reaction BB. But if we draw FBD, it is in the shape of letter T. All right. And in the letter T, two forces will be along the vertical line. And third is perpendicular to it, in which the force will be zero. So FAB is zero. It is based on note number three. So based on no note number three state that, let there be load, let there be reaction, right? If FBD of the joint is in the shape of letter T, that's what is happening at joint B. So two members are, two forces are in one line, force in third member, which is perpendicular to the other two is zero. So FAB is zero. So this way, in this truss, we have understood based on note number one, CD force in member CD and AB are zero. Based on note number three at joint B, we understood force in member AB is zero. Now we come to second truss. In the second truss, there are no reactions. It is a part of truss has been shown. So we have simply drawn it. Now we come to joint C. At joint C, three members are meeting, no external load join. Out of the three members, two are in one line. Force in third member, CB will be C. Is that understood? Similarly, you can go to joint D. To begin with also, you can go to joint D. Three members are meeting, two are in one line. Force in third member, DB will be or BD will be C. So this way, we can consider joint C and joint D. We will arrive at force in member BC and BD will be C. So zero force members in the given truss are BC and BD. Now I have written a note in the examination. If it is asked to identify the zero force member, we need to give only the answer. No explanation is required. Here I have given some explanation. But in the examination, if they ask you to identify the zero force member, you have to simply give the answer. No explanation is needed unless otherwise you are asked. Okay. Now, we'll uh, consider now a few more problems on type 1, that is the support in one hinge and one roller. But in the next problems onwards, you will have uh, identification of zero force members. Too. Now, We start with second problem for today's lecture. A truss is loaded as shown. Find the reactions that supports. Find the by method of section forces members JH, FB, and FH without any calculation. Name the members having zero actual force in them. Now, students, first part is he's asking you to find the support reaction. So let's find it out. Now we have drawn the free body diagram of this truss on the right side. On this right side, I have marked this angle as theta. This is alternate angle theta, same. This is theta, this is theta. All these angles are same, which are marked. In any of these triangles, like uh, you can understand here, like in this triangle, 10 theta will be what? 4 upon 3. 10 theta is what? 4. This FH is 4 and BH is 3. So 10 theta is 4 by 3. If it is 4 by 3, cos theta will be 3 by 5. I mean, if it reduces to a 3, 4, 5 right angle triangle, cos theta is base upon hypotenuse, that is 3 by 5. Sin theta is opposite upon hypotenuse. Opposite is 4 by 5, that is 1. So this way, students, sin theta and cos theta values are arrived at. Now we need to find the support reactions. How do you find the support reaction? You have to simply apply equilibrium conditions on the FBD of the truss. At A, it was uh, truss was supported by hinge, so two reactions, HA and D, are marked. I assumed HA to the left, VA upward. Here there is a roller. Exert one reaction, normal to the plane on which a roller is resting. Roller is resting on horizontal plane, reaction is assumed normal to it. All right. 
Let's apply equilibrium conditions on the FBD of the test. Sigma Fx is equal to zero. HA is equal to 20 kilo. 20 kilo is to the right. HA is 20, uh, 20 kilo That is to the right. Sigma Fy is equal to zero. VA plus VB is equal to 10 plus 30 plus 40 plus 40. That is 120. Sigma MA is equal to zero. When we take it, HA, VA will go up. Even this 10 will also go up. This 30, assume it against movement center A, 30 into 3 clockwise, 40 into 6 clockwise, 40 into 9 clockwise, BB into 12 anti-clockwise. So that gets you clockwise moments have been written on the left hand side, anti-clockwise on the right side, that gets you the value of VB. VB is 64.17 kilonewton. The value of VB you substitute in equation number one, you get the value of VA 55.8. Values of the reactions are written on the truss with correct directions. That's what we have done. All right. Now we can identify the zero force members. How we identify the zero force members? Let's understand it. It is now you can see that the third part of the problem is identify zero force members. So it is uh, we are identifying. So you can see that at joint J, uh, or else we can start from one end, like joint C. Yes, here based on note number three. At note number three states what? At any joint, let there be loads. Let there be reaction. But if a video of the joint is in the shape of letter T. Uh, force in third member perpendicular to that will be zero. So CD will be zero. All right. Here you cannot draw any conclusion because it is not fitting into any of the note number one, two, three. No conclusion can be drawn here at D. No conclusion can be drawn at A. K. No conclusion can be drawn at E. At J. Yes, we can draw a conclusion. FBD of the joint J. Right here, uh, three members are meeting. No external load of the joint. Out of three members, two are in one line. Force in third member, EJ is zero. Then at joint F, no conclusion can be drawn. Joint H, no conclusion can be drawn. At joint B, no conclusion can be drawn. At joint G, yes, the conclusion can be drawn. What conclusion can be drawn? FBD of the joint G is in the shape of letter T, right? Including the load 20 kN. So F force in third member BG will be zero, which is perpendicular to the other. So force in member BG is zero. So we can have concluded that Based on FBD of joint J, we understand EJ is zero. Based on FBD of joint C, we understand CD is zero. Based on FBD of joint G, we understand BG is zero. This way, three uh, members are zero force member in this stress. All right. We need to simply answer, uh, right? We don't need to even mention whether it is based on note number one or two or three. Now, we come to method of sections. For method of sections, I have marked three sections, right? How many me members are asked by method of section? Force in members, JH, FB, and F. He is asking JH, FB, F. Three members are asked. Now, students, three members, three sections. Three members, two sections. Three members, one section. It depends on what he is asking. How many sections are required? There is no straight answer to this question. See, suppose he had asked force in member EF, EH, and EH. So I could have taken only one section. All my three members are covered in one section. All right. So similarly, suppose he had asked FG, FB, and HB. So we could have taken one section like this. But so there is no rule that how many sections are required. It all depends upon the geometry or what uh, what is unknown. So like in the given problem, for each member, I'll have to take a different section. Like for member FB, I'll take section one. For member FB, I'll take section 1 1. So, is it satisfying the condition of method section 1? Three members are being uh, cut, including your unknown. But only one unknown can be determined for this. I cannot find even FH. To find FH, take section like this. Again, three members being cut. So, from this, I'll get the FH. For uh, third member JH, we'll take section 3 2. One more section will be needed. Right? From this section, I can get all three which are being cut, but I have to find only JH. So from section one one, we'll take FBD of part truss on the right side. I'll get it F. From FBD of part truss right of section two two, I'll uh, right of section two two, I'll get it FH. From FBD of part of truss right of section three three, I'll get the force in member G. So each member will require a different section because you cannot cover all members on one section. Sometimes we think that can we cover like you know that this is one, two, and three. So can we take a section like this? Can take the section. I'm less at the section as a but how many members are being cut? One, two, three, four, five. But can you take a section passing through four members? No, it is not allowed. Are you clear about it? So we have to follow the rules of method of section. Not more than three members should be cut, and including your unknown. Then only you can find force in that unknown. All right.
we have considered FBD of part or trust right of section. Members being cut BF, FG, and H. We are looking for only BF. So this is free bar diagram is example of general core system. You want to find only BF. Just write sigma F y is equal to zero. If you write sigma F y is equal to zero, F B F sign it up plus 64.17, that is VB equals zero, right? That gets you F B F as minus 80.21 or 82.21 kilonewton compression. All right. To find the forces member F H, we pass section two two like this. As already discussed, consider F B D of the part of the truss on right side. Members being cut are E F, F H, and E H. All three members forces will become unknown. Right, let's write sigma F Y is equal to zero. Forty plus F F H is equal to sixty-four point one seven. So F F H comes out to be twenty-four point one seven kilonewton. To find the force in member J H, we consider a section three three as already discussed. Consider part of the truss on the right hand side of the section. Members being cut are E F, E H, and J H. So all three members will become. Now we'll take moment about E. If we take moment about E, E F and E H will go off. Can you see that line of action of F E F and F E H is passing through? So for F E F and F E H will go off. We find moment about E. Forty into three clockwise. Twenty will also go off. All right. F J H into four clockwise about E. Sixty-four point one seven into six anti-clockwise. That's forty into three clockwise about E. F J H into four clockwise. Sixty-four point one seven into six anti-clockwise. You get the value. Sixty-six point two five five kilonewton. So this way, at zero force members are already discussed uh, the previous thing. Now in this problem, we found forces in three members by method of sections, but we were compelled, we are forced to take three different sections. So by doing or by solving such problems, we can draw the conclusion that there is no rule that how many sections are required to find a particular number of uh, uh, member forces. By method of section, so it simply it is based on geometry. Right, we are ready to move to the next sum. This problem also has been asked number of times in the examination. Referring to the truss shown in the figure, find reactions at D and C. Zero force members, force in members F E, E C and D C by method of sections, force in other members by method of Well, friends, first we need to find reaction. To find the reactions here, it is little challenging task. What it is the challenge in that you have to understand that. Uh, see, first you have to understand uh, from the FBD of this test. This is we have considered FBD of the test. Now, in triangle ACD, just understand ACD. This angle is one twenty degree. Thirty, thirty at sixty. This is one twenty. Is it one twenty? This is given thirty, so this angle uh, B A E uh, F will also be thirty. So in short, we can understand uh, triangle A C D will be isosceles triangle. It will be isosceles triangle. All right. So length A C will be equal to L. As D C L A C will also be L. This is listed over here. In triangle A C D, angle A C D is one twenty degree. C A D. And C D A will be equal. That is thirty degree. So triangle A C D is isosceles. That's why A C is equal to C D is equal to F. Now here we can just drop a uh, dotted line and complete a right angle triangle. If this length A C is L, this is going to be obviously sixty, ninety, or thirty. So this length C C one will be L cos sixty. In triangle uh, A C C one, C C one is A C cos sixty. That is point five L. Now we have taken the reactions at roller support C and hinge H D is assumed to be to the right and V D uh, is assumed up. Sigma F X equal to zero gives me H D zero. There is no horizontal load on the truss. Sigma F Y is equal to zero. We assume V D upward. V D plus V C is equal to twenty plus fifty. That is seventy. Sigma M D is equal to zero. Can I take moment about D? H D V D will go off. Twenty into point five L clockwise. Fifty into one point five L clockwise, VC into L anti-clockwise. So that gets you the value of VC as eighty-five kilonewton. If VC is eighty-five kilonewton upward, we put the value of VC eighty-five into this equation. The value of VD is arrived at minus fifteen. That is fifteen kilonewton. This way, students' reactions are obtained. Getting the reactions into this problem is little challenging because geometry is involved. So sometimes examiner will incorporate little geometry. 
uh, to find reactions or to find distances in the truss. Now we have found the uh, reactions. Second part is zero force members. Zero force members when we talk about, see, you can consider FBD of joint B. To begin with, uh, you can look at this side. If you consider FBD of joint B, based on note number two, at joint B, three members are meeting, no external load in joint. Out of three members, two are in one line, force in third member, FB will be the same. Right? Now we come to joint F. Once FB is zero, once FB is zero, then you can consider the FBD of joint F. So joint F initially has four members, but once you have uh, proved that FB is zero, now three members are left out. What are the three members? AF, FE, and F. Now, out of the three members, two are in one line. So force in third member will be zero based on not number two, right? So this way, force in member FC will be zero. So finally, what we can conclude in the given truss based on FBD of joint B, FB zero based on uh, FBD of joint F, FC is zero. There is no other joint where we can conclude any of the zero force members. All right, second part is done. Now you have to find force in member FE, EC, and DC by method of section. FE, EC, and DC. So pass a section cutting all three members. All the three unknowns are being covered on one section, one one. We can take FBD of part truss on the left hand side or on the right side. So I think left hand side is smaller part. So we should consider on left hand side part. All right. So force in three members will be obtained. Rest all can be obtained by considering FBD of the joints. Now here. We have taken section 1 1 as marked on the truss on the previous in the previous slide. We have taken every day the part truss on the left hand side. Members being cut are EF, C, and C. So this is FEF, FC, and FC. Right? I have extended the line of action of force C in member C and C D so that C is a convenient movement center. We can use the C as a convenient movement center if we want. All right. If you do not want, there is no need to use it. We can take movement forward. If you take movement about D, because D is also convenient movement center. How come D is a convenient movement center? F, E, F, and F, C, D will go off if you take movement about D and F, C will be off. So sigma M, D is equal to 0. 20 into 0.5L clockwise. F, C, cos 30 into 0.5L, 10, 30 clockwise. F, C, sine 30 into 0.5L clockwise. That gets you F, C as minus 20. That is 20 kilometer. Then we can take movement about C also. And we can take a moment about D. So three convenient moment centers are there, which can get you three unknowns independent. Sigma MD is equal to zero got CFC. We have done it. If you take moment about C, sigma MC, you will get FA. If you take moment about D, e, then you'll get FCD. So all three unknowns uh, member forces can be obtained independently also. But I have used only one moment equilibrium condition, and then I'm writing it sigma F is equal to zero. Sigma F is equal to zero when I write it, 15 down, 20 down. Fc sine 30 down is equal to Fef sine 30. So you have written the equation. You will have to substitute the value of Fef. That is, my, uh, sorry, you have to substitute the value of Fc. When you substitute the value of Fc, Fef is obtained as 15. We got Fef. Now we can write sigma, I have written sigma Fx is equal to 0. Sigma Fx will write Fcd plus Fc cos 30 plus Fef cos 30 equals 0. Substitute the value of Fc, that is minus 20. Substitute the value of FEF, that is plus 50. You get the value of FCD as minus 25.9. That is 25.98 kilometer. Zero force members we have already discussed. After these results are marked on the truss, then we consider FBD or joint D, right? This joint. FBD or joint D, we consider it so that FDE will be optimal. FDE, because this is already known FCD. 25.98 compression, 15 kilometer extra zone. Right? Sigma Fy is equal to 0 gives you Fd sine 30 is equal to 15. So Fd is 30. After that, we can take the joint A. When you take joint A, two members are only meeting at that. Both are unknown, FAB and F. This is 30, this is 30, and this is I've drawn a dotted line which is uh, horizontal. And 50 kilometer is 20. So I think this two force in these two members can be obtained by method of joint. Simply apply sigma Fx and sigma Fy is equal to Let's write sigma fx is equal to 0. FAF sine 60. Right? FAB sine 30 equals 0. Sigma FI 
FAF cos 60 plus FAB cos 30 plus 50 is equal to 0. Solving 1 and 2, FAB is minus 86.6, that is 86.6 kN compression. FAB is 50 kN. These results are also marked on the test as already shown. Now we take the last joint B. Last joint B orally also we understand it that it is uh, FBC is going to be 86.6 kN compression. But if you have to give a presentation by method of joints, you have to draw the free bond diagram. Only two members are meeting because third member was zero. So here we take this as X, this is Y. So we write sigma FY is equal to zero. Only unknown is FBC. FBC plus 86.6 is zero. So FBC is 80, minus 86.6, that is 86.6 kN. So this way we found uh, first reactions, then we found zero force members, then point force in certain members by method of sections, remaining by method of So this is a, something very standard format of the university examination. Let's move to the next one. Now, so far, we have already discussed number of problems of type 1. That is, the truss is supported on one end and one end. In all these problems, what we have done so far by method of sections, you saw that we took a section cutting or passing three members. If your section is passing through three members, and we consider FBD of the part of the truss on any side of the section, you see that three unknown member forces will come into consideration. Whatever members are cut, forcing those members will become unknown. Whatever members are not cut, forcing those members will not become unknown. If we are taking a section, after passing a section on the truss uh, with three members cut, you see that whether you take a video part of the truss on left side or right side, you see that it will reduce to general forces. Come. You are 100% sure to get the force in all three unknowns. But sometimes a geometrical condition will arise when you take you cannot take a section passing through three members. And if, if you are at all taking, so it, if it is a general force system, uh, you don't get any answer. All right. If it is a concurrent force system, a general force system, and if you're not getting answer, what is the use of taking section? Similarly, if it is a FBD or part of trust, by chance becomes concurrent. So then if three members are being cut, it is also again, you cannot find. It. So now we'll discuss two problems where even for a single member, or so we have to take a section passing through four members. Whenever we have to we take the uh, uh, section passing through more than three members, we are sure that we will not be in a position to get all. But here, if you take a section cutting four members in such a way that out of the four members, three are passing through one point, then force in fourth member will be obtained. So whatever three forces are passing through one point, that will be our convenient movement center. And right, and all three will go off and fourth one will be off. So this is what is listed here in this. Slide. Now we take the problem number four. On this slide. Determine the force in member AB and FD. This is AB and this is FD. If he's asking forces only two members, there's no point that I should think about method of joints. I should think only about method of sections. So first we draw FBD of trust. When I draw FBD of trust, so A is hinge, so two reactions, H and DA. Right? And G is uh, roller, so one reaction, E. All right? Now we need to find a force in member AB. So various options can be tried, but you can see that I can think of taking a section like this. So this is going to be FBD on the lower part will become concurrent, but three unknowns. Similarly, you can take a section like this. Then also there's the same problem. FBD or part of trust becomes concurrent with three unknowns. Then you can think of taking a straight member, straight member cutting all three, AB, uh, sorry, AB, AH, FHG and FH. Four members being cut if you take a straight section like this. But this section will also not go. AB and FG will be cut. But can you get AB and FG? No. Because the condition when you are taking a section cutting four members is that out of the four, three should converge at a point so that force in fourth member will be obtained. But that is not the condition with this section straight or this. But if I take a section like this, you can see that I take a section in this manner. And yeah, so in this section, what happens? So three members, BH, FH, and AB are converging at point A. So FFG can be obtained. Similarly, uh, BH, FH, and FG are converging at point F. So you can take moment about F to get AB. So this is what is the uh, specialty of taking this section. 
so we have already discussed that shape of the section does not matter shape of the section does not matter only what matters which members are, are being cut and how many members are being cut so we even since we if you consider fbd the part of does above section 11 i don't need to find even support reactions also in this case so i consider fbd the part of does above section 11 members being cut ab bh fh and uh, f now if we take moment about b if i take moment about b what will go up ab bh and fh right ffg into 4 clockwise even 15 will also go up. this 15 into 2 clockwise this 15 into 4 clockwise all right so that gets you the value of ffg as minus 22.5 or 22.5 kiloton completion now to find ab either you can take moment about b or sigma f5 so we have taken sigma f5 because that comes out to be easier fab if you write sigma f5 on this abd of dust which is general force system fab plus ffg is zero ffg is minus 22.5 fab is 22.5 kiloton positive that is tends side to find the force in member ab you can apply sigma mf also you can apply sigma mf also is that clear to everybody so in this truss we took a section cutting four members in such a way that out of the four members uh, three uh, were converging at a point so that it was possible to find the force in fourth member that is what you should remember it if you are taking a section passing through more than three we'll take one more problem based on this concept yes now i'm coming to problem find the force in member jf of the truss shown in the figure this is the truss given to you again it is a type one truss so truss supported on one end hinge and another end hinge now he is asking you force in only one member jf only for one member this is a very peculiar situation even for one member you'll have to take two section you cannot whatever way you take the section see you pass think of taking section like this like this like this in any manner you take it but you'll find that you cannot find the force in member jf are you understanding because when you take a section passing through more than three members force in member jf can be obtained only when remaining three are converging at a point which does not happen in this case so we'll have to take two sections what way we go ahead i'll take one section like this passing through bc bj jg gj and uh, uh, fg so with that if i take moment about b then bc bj and gj will go off ffg will be obtained ffg is not our unknown but using our section 11 i'll get ff then uske baad mein kya karunga ek straight section le lunga 2d straight section se kya hoga ffg is already known to me fjf is my unknown and if i take moment about c bc and cj will go that is what is the trick involved in that part you need so from this problem you can understand that even for a single member we may have to consider two sections uh, but it is a very rare situation don't apply such fundamentals in the beginning this is the last when nothing is left out then only you think of taking two section even possible so no reactions are required to be found at h and a because still we can prefer to consider part above the section 11 and 2 so we take first abd of the part of the truss above section 11 we take moment about b members being cut are bc bj gj and uh, uh, right fg if i take moment about b what it goes off bc what goes off bj what goes off gj ffg will be off sigma mb is equal to 0 ffg into 10 clockwise 2.5 into 5 anti clockwise 2.5 to 10 anti clockwise clockwise i have written on right side anti clockwise on left side with the ffg as 3.75 kN etc Then we take FBD of the part of the truss above section two. FFG is already known to be three point seven five. Now, when I take a video of part of truss above section two to three unknowns are there. Force in member BC, CJ, and JF. JF is unknown. FFG is already known. So if I take moment about C, FBC and FCJ will go off, right? So we are taking moment about C, right? FJF cos forty five will also be zero. FJF sine forty five into ten. clockwise ffg that is 3.75 into 10 is it 2.5 will also give zero moment 2.5 this into 5 is anti clockwise so i have written clockwise moments uh, on the left side anti clockwise on right side fjf is obtained as minus 3.54 or 3.54 kN compression all right so this is a very very rare type of the situation when even for a single member 
you are required to take two sections. So with that, we have covered uh, 10 problems on type one, five problems for full length I had covered in the previous lecture on trusses. And in today's lecture, I've covered five more problems on type one trusses, that is trusses supported with one in and one problem. Now we'll discuss two problems we'll be discussing on type two trusses. What are the type two trusses? Trusses supported on two hinges. Trusses supported hinges. Now, there are two notes which should be remembered. We have already written this uh, in the in the beginning also, but again I am uh, repeating that. If truss is supported on one hinge and one roller, that is type one trusses, all right, then you normally find support reactions because you can find also the reactions because hinge will exert two reactions, roller will exert one reaction. So three reactions can be easily obtained by applying equilibrium conditions of general force system on APD of the truss. But here, yeah, when your truss is supported on two hinges, you cannot find the four support reactions. Why you cannot find the four support reactions? Because it becomes example of general force system and you have four uh, three equilibrium conditions only. So how will you get four unknowns with three equilibrium conditions? So that's why, but here the geometry of the truss is such that it is possible to apply method of joints or it is possible to complete method of joints and method of sections on this truss without finding support reactions at both the hinges. All right. Also, we should remember that there is no member between the two hinges. There is no member between the two hinges. Whether they show or don't show that, you have just simply to ignore that. Because even if they provide a member, it does not work. Because hinges do not move in their position. So any member, even if you provide, it is a redundant, it has no meaning. Right? Now, we take problem number one. For the pin jointed truss shown in the figure, check if the truss is perfect or imperfect. All right. Condition of perfect has to be applied. Find the force in all members by method of joint. Find the force in member ED, this member, by method of sections. Right. To apply the check for perfect truss. This is a truss supported on two hinges. So condition of perfect truss is what? M is equal to 2J minus 4. J is number of members. 4 is number of reactions. M is uh, four, uh, uh, and number of members. Let's see that. Number of members in this truss is 10. How come? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. How many joints? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 joints are. Number of reactions 4. So 2j minus 4, 2 into 7 minus 4, 10. So hence m is also 10. So m is equal to 2j minus 4. So we can say that the given truss is perfect. All right. Reactions we have not to find. We have drawn FBD of the truss. We have drawn FBD of the truss. Once you have drawn FBD of the truss, we can start with the method of joints. Only we need to find the angle. This is 2 meter, 2 meter. So this is 45 degree. This angle is theta because this is 2 and this is 1.5. So 10 theta is what? 2 upon 1.5. You get theta is 53.5. Even this angle is also theta. All right. So this size angle is theta. This is what way you can get it. 10 theta is what? 2 upon 1.5. You get the angle theta. All right. Now you may start from joint G. Joint G, in fact, orally we understand from identification zero force members that the force in both the members will be zero under note number one. But he has not asked you to identify the zero force members. So we have to uh, arrive at by method of joints. So here we'll write sigma Fy is equal to 0, Feg sine theta is 0, so Feg is 0. Sigma Fx is equal to 0, Fxg is 0. All right. Now, after this, we take joint F. Joint F, it is in the shape of uh, the two members are meeting at uh, 90 degrees. Uh, all four members just uh, right. It's like a, you can see that there's no resolution will be involved in this type of the FBD of joint. This is zero force member, FDF is unknown. This is FEF and this is 25 kilo Newton external unit. So if you write sigma FX equal to zero, we understand FDF is zero. Zero is marked here, here. So FDF, sigma FY is equal to zero, FEF is 25 kilo Newton tension. So we have marked it 25, we have marked this. After that, we come to joint E. At joint E, here, this is 45. This is unknown FC. This is FD. All right. And this is 25 kilometers. 
right sigma f y is equal to 0 f d is sin 45 plus 25 equals 0 f d is equal to minus 35.36 that is complete. sigma f x is equal to 0 f c plus f d cos 45 equals 0 f c f d is minus 35.36 cos 45 is 0 f c is 25.36 mark the values this is tensile 25 away away from the arrows right 35.36 compression towards next we take joint d See here, we start considering, we never consider FBD of joint A or B if we have to or find the forces in uh, any of the members by method of joint or method of section. We start from free end. In this type of trusses, we start method of joints from the free end. Next, we take joint D. At joint D, you have the members meeting FAD, FCD. These two are unknowns. 20 kN external load. This is 0. This is 35.36 compression at 45. If you write sigma fx is equal to 0, FAD plus 35.36 cos 45 is 0. FAD is minus 25, that is 25 kilometer compression. Sigma FY is equal to 0, 35.36 sin 45 plus 20 is equal to FCD. So FCD is obtained as 45 kilometer. Last, you are left out with member BC and AC. So we consider FBD of joint C. When you consider FBD of joint C, this is 25 kilometer, this is FBC, FAC, and this is 45 kilometer already known. Now, here we take sigma Fy is equal to 0, Fac sin theta plus 45 equals 0. So, Fac is minus 56.25, 56.25 kilometer compression. Negative means it is not tensile. Sigma Fx is equal to 0, Fac cos theta plus Fbc is equal to 25. Put the value of Fac minus 56.25. All right, you get the value of Fbc that is 58.75 kilometer tensile. So, this way forces in all the members have been obtained by method of joints. And as and as soon we complete uh, FBD of a joint, working on the joint, result should be marked. It helps you in selecting the next uh, joint, which should be considered. Because method of joints is based on concurrent force system equilibrium. So whatever joint you are considering, make sure that there should not be more than two members. So we start uh, solving the method of joints in such a way that we cannot start in this trust from any joint except D. First we took G, you got these two. Then F, then you got EF and DF. E we consider it is C and D. We consider D, we got the C D and A. We consider C, we got the B C and D. We have not touched joint B, we have not joint, touched joint A, but still force in all members could be. Now he is asking well, one more part is force in member E D by method of section. This member E D he is talking about. So we can take a vertical section like this. I have marked it section one. We can take FBD of the partners on right hand side. You are sure that three members are being cut. All right, so forces in all three members can be obtained by method of sections. Forces in all the three members can be obtained by method of sections. All right. You have taken FBD of part of trust in the right hand side of the section. Okay. He is asking you to find out FD. Simply write sigma FY is equal to 0. Members being cut are C, D, and DF. Force in all the three members have been taken in tension. Sigma FY is equal to 0. FD sine 45 plus 25 is equal to 0. So FD comes out to be 9 minus 35.36 or 35.36 kilometer complex. Okay. We'll discuss one more problem of type 2 trusses, that is, trusses supported on two hinges, right? Here again, this time the problem is given like this. The truss is loaded and supported as shown in the figure. Identify zero force members. Find the force in member EF, EDA, and FC by method of joints. Find force in member GF, GC, and BC by method of section. So first, this given truss, you have to understand that if the truss is mounted on a wall like this, right? So you have to take it out from the wall and mark the external hinges at A and B. So we have drawn the abbey truss with hinge at A and hinge at B. All right? And draw a dotted line between A and B. Dotted line indicate that there is no member AB. AB is not a member. Now, he is asking you to first identify zero first member. 
so that is only at joint d you can identify at joint d three members are meeting no external load, load on the joint out of three members two are in one line four is in third member df will be zero so we understand that based on node number two at joint d four in member df is zero. this is one answer then method of joints he is asking ef ed and fc so ef and ed you can consider fbd of joint e. fbd of joint e 100 kN external load 200 kN external load fef is at 30 degree x this is unknown fd is unknown so you can find both sigma fy is equal to 0 fef sin 30 is equal to 100 so fef is 200 kN sigma fx is equal to 0 fd plus fef cos 30 is 200 substitute the value of fef into it 200 plus you get fds 26.8 kN tensile so we marked it 26.8 kN tensile in member b right write the value near the center arrows away this is 200 kN tensile away. Next is he is asking force in member uh, FC. Right? We have already understood FT is zero force member or DF is zero force member. So we can directly move to joint F. When you consider FBD or joint F, this 200 kN is already known to us. 100 kN external load. FFG is unknown. FCF is unknown. So when we draw FBD of this joint, there are two unknown fcf and ffg but my uh, requirement is only fcf so i'll change the reference x is f i took this as x and this is y so this is given to you students this is 30 degree it is known to you this is 30 this is 30 it is understood from the metal so this is 90 so 90 minus 60 is 30. similarly if this is 30 this is 60 because this is vertical if this is 60 this is 30. so marking all angles you can write sigma fy is equal to zero when I take sigma fy is equal to 0, 200 and ffg will not interfere. 100 cos 30 plus fcf cos 30 equals 0. So that gets you the value of fcf as minus 100, that is 100 kN compression. We have marked it 100 kN compression, arrows towards joint, towards joint, values between. Then we mark the section to find the force in three members gf, gc, and bc. This is gf, this is gc, this is bc. So for finding the force in three members, we mark a section like this. This section is passing through all the three unknown four member force members, right? So force in all the three members can be obtained directly or through one section. We can consider FBD of the part of the truss on the right side of section one, one. Right? We always consider here you have the compulsion of taking FBD of the part of the truss on the right side of section one, one right? You know why? Because left hand side you cannot consider since we have not found reactions at hinges A and B. And we are not required to find the reactions at hinges A and B. All right. So we are uh, bound or we are supposed to take only right hand side part of section 1 1 so that reactions at A and B will not come into consideration. All right. Now to find the force in member FFG, CG, and DC. We pass the section 1 1, right? FBD of part of trust on the right side has, right side has been taken. Right. Now, to find the force in member uh, CG, we can take moment about E. If you take moment about E, these two external loads will go off, FFG will go off, FBC will go off. Moment about E, you take it FCG into 6 clockwise and 100 into 3 anti clockwise, you get it FCG as. So. Just a Yes, friends. We are back. Now, please. Uh, so, we understood that if you take sigma me, then 100 kN and 200 kN moment about E will be 0. FBC will be 0. FFG will also be 0. So, when we take moment about E, only two forces will give the, give the moment. FCG into 6 clockwise, 100 into 3 anti clockwise. FFCG is obtained as 50. Now, you take sigma FY is equal to 0. FCG up. 
एफ एफ जी साइन थर्टी अप इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड प्लस हंड्रेड एफ सी जी विज फिफ्टीट एफ एफ जी इज ऑप्टेन एस थ्री हंड्रेड किलोमीटर नाउ यू वॉन्ट टू यू ऑलरेडी फाउंड इट वॉट एफ सी जी इज ऑप्टेन यू गॉट एफ एफ जी ऑल्सो नाउ एफ बी सीज रिमेन सो सिग्मा एफ एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो सिग्मा एफ एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो एफ बी सी प्लस एफ एफ जी कॉस थर्टी इज इक्वल टू टू हंड्रेड एफ बी सी इज रिक्वायर्ड एफ एफ जी इज थ्री हंड्रेड सब्सिट इज इक्वल टू एफ बी सी इज ऑप्टेन एज माइनस Here, students, to find the three unknown member forces, that is FBC, FCG, and FFG. I have to use one moment equilibrium condition about E, and then sigma FI, and then sigma FX. But if you want, you can use three moment equilibrium conditions also. Sigma M is equal to zero is used for finding FCG. Sigma M G is equal to zero can be used to find FBC. Sigma M C is equal to zero can be used to find FF. So that three moment equilibrium conditions are possible to be applied. A, on this test to find the three member forces by method of sections right that will get you independent answers but uh, that is what is you can use three moment equilibrium conditions also in method of sections provided you have the three convenient moment centers what do you mean by three convenient moment center where out of the three unknowns two are two are converging so then you can take that point as the moment center so as to get the force in third unknown all right so students this was all about method of sections and method of joints right this chapter again i repeat i have covered in two lectures right and uh, this chapter is not for mumbai university students it is uh, chapter is for autonomous colleges in mumbai region right like vgti spc all right thakur and many other colleges have this chapter in their syllabus all right now we are left out with few more topics which i'll be completing in next one week time all right now uh, please share the qr code of my uh, youtube channel with your friends right so they should also be benefited right because there is no cost for it you can share it they will also be benefited with that there's there's uh, no compulsion to buy the book to understand the video lectures all right yes if you want to refer to more solved problems you want to Uh, have the access to the mcqs on every chapter then you should definitely buy my book the book is available on amazon we always give you the desk, uh, amazon link in the video description of every lecture all right book is available on the local bookstores also all right uh, make sure that if you have any difficulty you can get in touch with me right my mobile number and uh, mail id are given on the book also all right and please uh, if possible please subscribe to my uh, youtube channel so that you keep getting the updates as and when the new video is uploaded all right thank you very much